I have a very special kind of tree, Steve. It is a, a certain subspecies of weeping wattle. And the subspecies is Peltiforum africanum tingana. <laughs> you can just barely see him. It is not the best visual ever, but he's there. Slowly, can we see him yet? Maybe, maybe you guys. I, I know some of you are very sharp eyed, but look how well he camouflages inside of this a weeping wattle. There's just his little nose peeking through. And that other vehicle's moving, he really does not care. He is sleeping heavily, he's very relaxed. I'm just gonna let these guys move and then I will start talking again. Here we go. So Hasana was seen inside of Chitwa Lodge, which is not far from us. Uh, he was seen in there this morning, and then Tingana's popped up, and we all know that Hasana has a little love affair going on with Tingana. He's absolutely obsessed with him. So I'm sure Tingana is just resting in the shade here, going, oh, thank goodness that boy hasn't found me yet. I can, I can be alone for a little while. Fast asleep, and it's warm now. The cloud cover's gone away. It's a little bit windy, but it's not anything like what it was earlier with the chill. And he should spend most of the day today doing exactly what he's doing right now. So if you didn't know that he was here, you would most likely drive right past him. There's a little bit of alarm calls happening with the birds at the moment. And there's also some squirrels that are alarm calling, but those squirrels are alarm calling quite far back. So I wonder if Mr. Hasana is sniffing out Tangana here. We'll just have to wait and see and be patient. Can we hear all the birds chirping? Wildflower, you're saying, luckily I spotted that nose. True, true wildflower, but actually I was very lucky because while we were busy with our elephants, there was another vehicle that found him and called us and said, Noel, come, Tingana's here. And I said, thank you very much. So I cannot take credit for this. I have to give the other guys credit for it. Now, oh, Davi, what do you think? Should we go around and just see the back end? Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to try and move around our Peltiforum here. Our subspecies of Peltiform. It's going to be a little bit bumpy as I meander over these broken logs. Oh, sorry about that. There's your Noel move for the day. Sorry, do you want this? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Sorry, Bex, go again. So this is Tingana. Hasana was seen at Chitwa this morning. We haven't found him yet. This is Tingana lying here under the tree. And then we were talking about Hasana. Because Hasana likes to follow Tingana around and spend time with him. And then I was saying that there's lots of squirrels calling in the background and maybe Hasana will pop up. The physical leopard on the screen is the Duke Tingana himself. He's resting so nicely. He's making me want to take a nap. You can see how thick the back of his neck is there. Also, you can see the spot pattern on the side of his, on his right hand side. There we go. That's part of Tingana's spot pattern. And as we came around and went over those logs, he sort of looked at us, but in general, he's just really 
Green Knot Carrying is being our beautiful little last minute leopard, although we get him for more than a minute today. We're going to get him for however long all of you feel like sitting with him. It's completely up to you. I don't think he's going to do too much unless something comes along for him to eat, which could happen, or if Asana comes around and starts pestering him. We've been lucky today. We have had almost all the big five on show today. So we just need Jake here, just not as often as they see up that side because our feeding habitat for buffalo at the moment is not very good so they're going to be off more to our east and possibly our south where some of the food is a little bit better now don't forget everyone we're live and interactive hashtag safari live on twitter or on youtube chat we love your questions the squirrels are still going now it's warm enough that there's going to be birds of prey that are flying around. I'm just not seeing any at the moment. And we really aren't far from where Hasana was seen. And he was seen at all. But a leopard's a leopard. And we're lucky we got to this one this morning. So remember we talk about dappling light often. We've got dappled light coming through now. <laughs> Ravinda, you're wondering if animals snore while sleeping. I've seen lions snore. Um, I haven't seen leopards snore, but the way that Tangana is looking, it, it, it might happen today. <laughs> and I would laugh. So that dappled light pulling through those uh, leaves there. And you can see just how well that dappling with his um, camouflage coat, that's sort of what it's meant to do, those rosettes, the dark on the outside, light on the inside help him blend into the leaf litter there and or bark of trees and then that dappling light comes through and makes him very hard to spot now we can obviously see him but now that we've seen him and we know he's here he's hard to miss but if you hadn't seen him yet all of that would conceal him and that's exactly what he wants now the reason why he's so relaxed with us here is because he's used to us we're part of his natural environment and he understands that we're just here in our vehicle he can see Davi he can see me he can see the camera he understands the whole setup and he just really doesn't care. Animals only behave, something like a leopard, only behave scared of humans when they've been in scenarios where humans have scared them again and again and again. Other than that, their behavior would be curiosity and or complete indifference. That would be normal behavior. Same with lions. Where Steve, I talked to you all this morning about where Steve and I worked up in Botswana together. Up there, um, when we were doing a lot of our, our walking, it was very difficult to get lions on foot because the lions had had such negative interactions with humans for so long that they were nervous and would run off. Same with the cheetahs. If they hadn't had those negative interactions, their behavior would have been much different. It would have been, again, curiosity or indifference um, or possibly a slight aggression depending on how close you got to them. But in, in general, a normal wild animal and its normal habitat and scenario will not be nervous of us. Tangana, you're making me want to take a nap. At least li lift your head up and, you know, groom yourself or something. Yeah, Bex is a green. Viewers, I hope any of you that are watching and it's, you know, the middle of the night where you are, that this is not putting you to sleep. That's not the point of our show. But it is a nice uh, visual to curl up maybe with your pillow and keep one eye on for the next while. You can see those beautiful whiskers we talk about often. Notice how that they're white with a little bit of black mixed in there and extra super long so that when they're stalking animals, it helps feel any uh, debris the wrong word but any obstruction that's the word I'm looking for obstructions that might be around that could possibly make noise as they're stalking much longer than a lion's whiskers and also much longer than a cheetah's whiskers as well it's like having lots of little fingers hanging off the side of your face now amazingly this road 
that he's next to, and he's really sort of on the side of the road, is the main access road that the guests use to come in and out from Chitwa. And even though that would seem like a very noisy and, and possibly annoying scenario, he's still going to stay stationary here for most of the day. He won't move too far. It won't bother him. He's very used to it. Rishi, you'd like to know if Tingana is one of the biggest leopards that we've seen. Um, Rishi, not that I've seen. He is a big boy, but he's definitely not the biggest leopard I've seen. I think for the male leopards that we tend to see on the show, he is the biggest, especially because Mvula is getting much older and Mvula also has those stocky sort of bulldog legs. Um, and he's much, much bigger than Hasana and much bigger than Tamba, who I still haven't seen yet, but I'm hoping to see at some point. Um, so he's a decent sized male, definitely a decent sized male, but not the biggest. He doesn't even care that I'm moving around. Sometimes when we park like we've parked now, we have to move just slowly, just not to bother anyone. And I'm moving in my normal way. And he's not even twitching an ear at it. His tail's not even twitching. All right. Although we love our leopards, this leopard is extremely flat. So I think let's go have a little bit of movement to our day and wake you all up before the end of show so that you don't fall asleep in the last few minutes. Let's head on over to Steve and we'll see if maybe Tingana wants to do something other than what he's doing now. Last views of our beautiful Duke our Tingana lying here peacefully in the shade and I just want to say everyone's so sorry that Jamie has left us a little bit earlier than usual. There seems to be some gremlins, some technical issues that have attacked her in the Mara. Nothing else has attacked her, but the signal has just boop and disappeared and it happens. But we did get some wonderful, wonderful, wonderful content from her this morning. So thanks, Jamie. And then from our side, I think this afternoon, we'll possibly come back here and check again on Tingana. And I'm hoping that Tundi pops up this afternoon. I'm also hoping Hasana pops up this afternoon. Apparently I'm looking forward to leopards this afternoon. I wouldn't mind a few more elephants if the day gets warmer like it seems to be doing and not staying cooler like I previously thought it was going to do, then we might get some more elephants swimming and maybe we get lucky and the sticks decide to move away from Little Gowrie and up into an area where we can see them. Tammy, you're saying it's funny if Tingana's in the exact same spot. Tammy, we could place a bet. I'm going to bet that he's in the exact same spot, um, and we'll see who else, if other people think that he might move. You never know, but yeah, I also think he's going to be in the exact same spot. Now, the other update I wanted to give you was that wild dogs have been seen not far from us, not in anywhere where I can physically drive now, but they're back. So that's also a possibility for this afternoon. So we all must hold thumbs, cross fingers, send out good vibes that our Murphy does not chase everything away and that the wildlife viewing carries on in a fantabulous fashion as it has done so this morning. And then this afternoon for birds, oh, I'm waiting for Tristan to get back from leave. He went on a, a bird expedition and I want to know what birds he's ticked off. So I'm hoping maybe we get some nice birding this afternoon as well. I still haven't seen Carmine bee eaters to put on screen for you all down this side. So that would be nice. And other than that,